all black men are being gunned down all because of this because of the color of my skin and it makes me even more terrified to live in this world where we're all supposed to be equal but we've dealt with segregation we've dealt with lynching and now at the end of the day in 2014 we're still dealing with lynching we're just not being hung by our throats instead we're being shot down like dogs i have two boys 19 and 20 so i am directly i feel as though i'm impacted by what happened because my kid, my children, and the, the way I look at it from a parent's standpoint is this, as long as I am an American citizen, I could be in any neighborhood in this country, unless it's gated or private or something of, of the such. But. Even though that is a big hurdle to get over in life, we need to do something in our own communities. Yes, I'm very outraged, as you can see, about the countless victims who have been gunned down by policemen, by civilians, all because they fear for their lives. When we all know that there are good and bad in every single race in this world. Whatever race that you may be, it's, it's good and bad in any race, in any age group. It doesn't matter. But they're not even giving us an opportunity to now even put our hands up because they're still shooting. So it's like, when you see them, you want to run because you don't know how this will turn out. Because he's already put me in a category because I'm black, that I may have a gun. And if I can, I'm gonna give you a, a, a story that just happened to me uh, a week ago. I was house hunting. My son and my daughter, we was out house hunting, and I pulled up at this house where I was gonna meet this realtor. She said meet her there at five o'clock. So. I'm there at five, she calls and says she's gonna be a little late. So this sheriff deputy, he passed by on his way out of the subdivision. And when he got to the stop sign, he stopped and, and he looked, I could tell he was checking me out from the, the rear view mirror. He made a U-turn. He came back and he says to me, um, is everything okay? I said, yes sir, everything is okay. So he says, uh, are you waiting for someone? I said, yes. And then he says, um, you're being a little vague. And I said, well, I'm answering your questions. I said, you asked me, was I okay? I said, I'm okay. You asked if I, if I was waiting on someone, I said, yes. What else do you want? And so he proceeded to ask me some other questions like, well, why am I there? And I asked him a question. I said, well, what laws am I breaking? And he said, well, i tell you what I'll do. He backs up, he gets out, and he takes down my tag and asks for my driver's license, so he's going to check me out. And he ran my, my tags, and I guess it came back clear. But by that time, the realtor had pulled up, and he starts to tell her the story as to why he was there. And so I figured to myself, I said, well, you know, I'm not breaking any laws, so I'm going to get out, and I'm going to state my case as well. And so, now the three of us, we're standing there, we're talking, and he's trying to explain to her that I was giving him vague answers. And I said, you was asking me yes or no questions, and I was answering you. So how is that being vague? And it went, it was already going downhill, but it, it went further downhill. And I told him, I says, um, I got a right to be in this neighborhood. I don't have to answer to you why I'm here. And he says, well, I live in this neighborhood and I know everybody in here and that's what we do. We see a strange face and we try to figure out or ask questions as to why you're there. And so I told him, I said, well, as long as I'm not breaking any laws, I don't feel as though you have any right to run my tags or, or do what you're doing now. And so then he said he, but that's what he was implying that I was starting to become belligerent. And so I told the realtor, I said, I'm talking, I was talking to this officer in the same tone that I'm talking to you. I said, but that's what they say to get things going. If, if they'll say, well, he was acting belligerent, so therefore I had to do this, or that, I had to do that. And it is kind of proceeds from there. So I think that, you know, any young black, um, males in America 
you need to be very conscious. First of all, they should make it their business to know their rights. And no police officer, sure, if he asks for ID, yeah, you give him the ID, that's what you're supposed to do. But if you're not breaking any laws, there's no need to run. There, there's no need to, I, I would say, get defensive. All you have to do is stand up and speak like a man as to why you are where you are. You may use excessive force just for a traffic stop if you know he's running after someone he may use excessive force just for saying that you know I believe this person had a gun but these incidents even though I'm not in St. Louis I'm right here in Aiken South Carolina an incident has occurred where I've been profiled myself we got to court he thought that just because I was black I wouldn't fight the ticket I would go along with what the ticket had on there because I wasn't woman enough or brave enough to stand up for myself but I still stood up for myself and because of that and because thank God I had a fair judge that ticket was thrown out it's on black crime because black people what we do we're like crabs in that tank where you go to the grocery store and you try to purchase one we're pulling each other down because we're one of them is trying to get out and we have to stop doing that it's so many issues that are in our own community that not only do we need to focus on this right here we need to focus on our own mind state there are so many fathers out here that are not raising their men to be men. So men are going out here, well boys, excuse me, they're going out here to these streets and they're letting the streets raise them. And then what happens? They're in jail for murder. I never had a father in my life. Never had a father. But thank God for my mom, but it's some things that my mom couldn't teach me that my dad was supposed to teach me. Letting the streets raise our children. Because what they're doing, they're going to games. And they're feeling a brotherhood. They're feeling some type of fatherhood or somebody to look up to when they're looking up to the wrong people. They're looking up to rappers. Those are the wrong people to look up to. You need to look up to somebody who is doing something in your community. Rappers are not doing enough in my eyes in your own community. You hollering about the hood, but are you going back to the hood and telling that boy that's on that corner that's trapping, look here, man, you ain't got to do that. Go to college and make something of yourself. If we used to have the same courage and the same mind state, as they did when Martin Luther King was trying to get us equal rights, we'll be a force to be reckoned with. But they don't take us serious because we don't take our own self serious. Why is it that when we go to clubs and we go to parties, we the ones fighting? We the ones shooting up the club. Shoot innocent people for what? For what? Martin Luther King died for this? Malcolm X died for this? Rosa Parks? All of them paved the way where we could be something even greater and we got a chance right now. We got opportunities that they probably thought we would never get to have. We got a black, black president. The change starts here, man. It's got to start. But it has to happen in our own community. Black lives do matter.